Are you looking for a great bottle of bourbon? For less than $75? You're in luck. Here are our top 10 recommendations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio. My name is Arthur. And I'm Scott, and this is Artfully Bourbon. We did an episode of $25 to $50 bottles of bourbon, and it proved to us that you don't need to spend a lot to drink a good bourbon. But say your budget is a little bit higher, or you want to take the next step in your bourbon collection. The mid-tier? Something a little nicer to share with friends. Yeah. We tried a lot and narrowed it down to these 10 bottles between $50 and $75 that we both love and are recommending to you. The prices shown today are what they are in our area. They may vary depending on where you live or shop. Wait, what are we drinking? It's a surprise. I'll let you know when we get to the bottle. But you should try it. That is terrible. Was that even from this bourbon list? Really? Yes. <laughs> it is from the list and it's not terrible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not terrible. All right, the first bottle on the list today is Woodford Reserve Double Oak and it was originally released in 2012. You know what else was released in 2012? No. Gangnam Style. Wait, Gangnam Style? Like yeah. the dance or the yeah. song? Like like the horse dance? Yeah. It's like and, this. <laughs> and you're, you're really good at that too. I'm into a few weddings. <laughs> Random facts from Scott. Were you still a DJ in 2012? No, that ended way before then. When I first started getting into nicer bourbon, this was always my go-to. Yeah, it's a popular one. But this one I would recommend over their standard expression, even for a few extra dollars. Yeah, it's a, it's a great one to start with, but now that we've tried over 100 other bourbons, still something I love to have on my shelf. And love this little bottle design. Yeah, so it looks like a premium shape to just me. Just looks so nice. And it's only 90.4 proof. Yeah, I think this is the lowest proof on this entire list. So, you know, if you aren't into higher proofs, you should start with this one. Yeah, this is the standard Woodford Reserve, mm -hmm. but uh, it's taken from the first charred oak barrel and it's put into a second lightly toasted and charred barrel yep. for roughly a year. Yeah, it's really amazing what a second barrel can do to bourbon. It's a little oaky, but definitely not in a bad way. Really sweet. I always think of pancakes and syrup when I sip on this. It is a flavorful experience that just about any bourbon drinker will enjoy. Okay, let's pick up the proof a little. Bottle number two on this list is the Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. There are other Russell options out there, but this is this is probably our favorite. Well, except for the Russell's 13. Yeah, of, of course, but that's not a standard offering like this one. The single barrel doesn't have an age statement, but guessing eight to 10 years. Yeah, the single barrel is 110 proof and really delivers a rich and creamy profile. Spicier than this guy, mm -hmm. but the creamy vanilla notes just really stand out. Yeah, the finish is amazing. It's spicy and fruit and just a, a tiny earthy note. Mm -hmm. I'd say for a single barrel too, it seems to always be consistent from bottle to bottle. Man, the Russells, they really know how to make their Kentucky bourbon. They know what they're doing. All right, next we have the Wilderness Trail Bottled and Bond. The only bottled and bond on this list. This bottle is a sweet mash rye. Yeah, and you, you really can't tell from looking at the bottle other than the black label. Yeah. Both the rye and the wheat, which has a yellow label, are both great. Both use a similar recipe as well. The mash bill is 64% corn, 24% wheat or rye, and 12% malted barley. They both might be a little younger, but they have to be at least four years to be the bottle and bond. Both the rye and the wheat are between five and six years old, 
maybe seven. Uh, and they're both 100 proof since they're bottled and bond. And they're both small batch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason we added Wilderness Trail to this list is because of the unique flavors. Mm -hmm. This really doesn't taste like your average big brand Kentucky bourbon. And what I really like is that small batch, they take it seriously. Each batch is 20 barrels or less. You mentioned sweet mash as well. That's something else they do differently. Mm -hmm. Most distilleries stick with the sour mash. Yeah, it's a little bit more difficult, I think. They are one of the first to do so as well. And it's, it just creates a different, unique profile. Really, really quality. And it's gonna be interesting to see what happens now that they are owned, or partially owned, majority owned, by a more well-known brand, Wild Turkey. Okay, bottle four is Knob Creek Nine Single Barrel Reserve. Scott, is this bottle underrated? Uh, I don't know, but if it is, it shouldn't be. It's a 120 proof. I mean, what is not to love about this? Yeah, even though this is a high proof, I find it fairly easy to drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I think of whenever I think of Kentucky bourbon. Kind of your standard profile of flavors. It's, it's not what I would call complex by any means. But those flavors are so rich and sweet. Mm -hmm. And it has uh, one of my favorite finishes. Yeah. Okay, what is next? All right, if you think the Snob Creek is good at 120 proof, you should try this next one. The Larceny Barrel Proof at 125.8 proof. This is a flavor bomb. Yes, it is. Scott, is this in your top 10? Oh yeah. What about top five? Yeah, probably. Yeah, this thing is a rock star. It is. All right, this is batch number A123. Yeah, so Larceny is released three times a year. And if you aren't familiar with what that batch code means, A is the first batch of the year, one is the month it's released, so January, mm -hmm. and the two, three is the year, 23. Larceny uses Heaven Hills weeded mash bill and the bourbon is six to eight years old. And like Scott said, flavor bomb. <laughs> Rich, lots of caramel and molasses. Yeah, with oak and vanilla. And a little nuts. I love sipping on this neat. But if the proof is too much, just add a dash of water or a rock. Scott, I know you like weeded mash bills, but did you know that this one was the first weeded bourbon to win Whiskey of the Year by Whiskey Advocate? I didn't, but now I do. And I think I'm gonna give it an award too. <laughs> All right, before we get into the next one, Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the high tier episode coming up next week. And if you like any of these bottles so far, hit that like button. Next bottle. Number six. Six. Maker's Mark French Oak Cask Strength. You knew this was coming, didn't you? Hey, another weeded. <laughs> Can I give this one an award too? Scott, come on. All of these get awards for being on the show. This is another unique one that consistently delivers. It's 110 proof bourbon finished with 10 virgin oak staves. Makers does an incredible job with their wood finishing. This is a great introduction to the finished stave profile. Something I really enjoy. And if you like this one, you will love their limited released wood finishing series. The wood finishing series, in my opinion, might be a little bit better than the cellar aged. In your opinion. <laughs> the finishing creates a beautiful flavor profile. Mm -hmm. It's sweet, honey, and fruit, and also a little bit oaky and a little leathery. Yeah. Is this what I'm drinking? Close, but no. Mm, okay. The next one is a classic, but I know a lot of people who have never tried it. Old Forester 1920 Prohibition Style. Who hasn't tried Old Forester 1920? If you haven't, 
you should. We are huge fans of Old Forester. This might be our favorite from the entire Whiskey Row series, even though they are all spectacular. Rich and powerful is how I describe this. 115 proof with a ton of flavor. It's 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. And the best part, always readily available. The whole Whiskey Row series. You can find this literally at any store you walk into. If you're having trouble finding limited release bourbons, definitely pick this one up. It's consistently good and a premium bourbon. I've never heard a bad thing about this one. Okay, the next bottle is a new one. And if you've watched any of our previous episodes, you know we are big fans of Holiday in the state of Missouri. This is the Ben Holiday Rickhouse Proof. This is just hitting the shelves with a wider release, but one that we definitely recommend trying if you get a chance. Yeah, this is the rye mash bill similar to Old Forester. It's 73% corn, 15% rye, and 12% malted barley. Yeah, and the wheat version of this is currently playing in the versus postseason. You can check that out here. This bottle is, let's see, 117.9 proof, and it was bottled in March 2023. Yeah, and the flavor. Oh, fruit, cinnamon, caramel, nuts, a little corn, which I actually like, and some oak. Yeah. Mm. Bold and beautiful. Wait, <laughs> that sounds like a soap opera. This is not a soap opera. <laughs> this is a six year old bourbon. Sometimes you can find it for seven years. And because we found out at our distillery tour, this is coming out 10 year version, another couple years. Great bourbon can come from outside of Kentucky and this is a great example. Proof. The next one, I feel like we see all over, but just recently tried it for the very first time. This is the Noah's Mill. All right, all right, Scott. What do you know about Noah and his mill? Well, not much other than it comes from a lesser known distillery in Kentucky, Willet. Mm -hmm. But it has extraordinary character. Yeah. And it's what's in your glass. Oh, I knew I liked it. Mm, I gotta try it again. Mm, wow. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised when we first tried this and still, still great. This used to be a source bourbon, but it no longer is. They, they make all their own bourbon now. And one thing this had, but no longer has, is a 15 year age statement. It's really good, but probably not 15 years. It's smooth and funky, but I actually really like it. Yeah, I, man, I love the taste of this. Why though? Like, I mean, look at this bottle. It's like they found empty wine bottles put some Comic Sans type on there. What? I don't know, it's, it's handmade <laughs> just like the bourbon. The bottle's even green. <laughs> All right, well, you gotta look past the bottle design. The taste, oh, it's so tasty. Another great thing, 114.3 proof. Yeah. Earthy, graham cracker notes, it's just velvety, with a little spice on the finish. So have you tried this one? Let us know what you thought of it in the comments. All right, Scott. We left the best for last. Well, we left the rye for last. You're right. Here is a rye and it is fantastic as well. This is the Redwood Empire Emerald Giant Cast Strength. One hundred and sixteen point four proof rye whiskey. Scott, what do you what do you think of this rye? Well, it's different than their standard Emerald Giant expression, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. It's herbal and earthy, chocolate with a little bit of a spicy finish. It's really unique for rye, I think, in my opinion. I really like that earthy note, the chocolate spice. Mm. Yeah, so the mash bill is 94% rye, 5% malted barley, and my personal favorite part, 1% <laughs> wheat. Good thing they got in that wheat. I love wheat.
All right, we couldn't add all the bourbons in this price range. A few that got cut were the Baker 7, so good, love the nutty flavor in that. Clyde Maid's Reserve, another great one, and a classic Wild Turkey Rare Breed. So would you replace anything on this list? Tell us what we missed or what you would put into this pricing category. Leave us a comment down below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and be sure to check out this next video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Right there. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Enjoy responsibly. Peace.